Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Today I want to talk about how to get rid of blockages. Now, when we talk about blockages, there's a lot of different avenues of what a blockage can be. It can be a physical ailment, injury or illness that we've now attached to our physical body, okay? Then there is also the emotional blockages past traumas and hurts, grudges, regrets that we hold on to. It could also represent something from a past life that has now come into this being as well. So that's what I want to tackle in today's video and show you how to eliminate these blockages within yourself. Okay, so there's three steps. So if you're having um, you know, if you follow me and you like writing things down because this is like a development class, get out your pen and paper and write all this stuff down and then start putting it into practice. Okay. So number one on your list, we accept what that blockage is. Now I'll go through some examples of what could be a blockage. A blockage could be some illness or injury that our body physically has now. Okay. It could be trauma as a child, whether it be a childhood injury where we fell over, broke our leg, and now we don't want to run as fast, or we have sexual assault coming in from somebody else that's done that to us. It could be something like sibling rivalry where we feel inadequate undervalued because there was a favorite who got preferred over us so there's a lot of different avenues here I'm not judging or accusing anyone for what we've been through okay so then we've got to accept what that issue or that blockage is now the reason why it's called a blockage is because it's preventing us from becoming our full potential so if there is a fear that we hold, oh my gosh, I could never be a pilot because I have a fear of planes. The blockage is the fear of planes. I would never be able to run because I've got a sore leg. That leg is the blockage preventing you from running. So when you say something that you're passionate about or what it is that you want to do in your future, if you answer that, oh, I'd love to be able to do that, but or because I can't do that because whatever that because is that's your blockage so the first thing we have to do is accept that blockage what is it is it a trauma is it an emotional reaction is it a fear is it a physical ailment injury or whatever else we have to us is it a totally separate person that's done that or inflicted that onto us where we don't feel that we can be our full potential because of someone else affecting us so we accept what that is we have to look at what is that because I can't fly because I have a fear of flying I'll use that one okay so that fear of flying is our blockage so we have to recognize that and call it out for what it is. I have a fear of flying. It may be a physical thing, as I said, okay? So let's just stay with this flight one. I can't fly because I have a fear of flying. So what we do is we attack that belief system and we accept what we have whether it's a fear of lying, whether it's a fear of heights, whether it's a fear of being in confined spaces of an aircraft. So we look at that trigger that's causing that fear and we have to identify that within ourselves. So we call it out. We recognize what that injury, ailment, illness, fear is. And we call it out for what it is. Say it logically. 
So instead of saying, I have a fear of flying, what is it about the fear associated to flying that's really a trigger? So you call it out, oh, I'm actually um, claustrophobic or I might have a fear of heights or I don't like being that far off the ground and not being in control of the plane. So you call out that behavior. Then once we've identified we've recognized what that trigger is and we call it out we accept it which is rule number one we accept it I have a fear of flying why because I don't like being in a confined space with all those other passengers around me so we don't really have a fear of flying we're really claustrophobic so we call it out and we accept it so instead of saying I have a fear of flying we can now say I am claustrophobic so if you've watched my last video about the I am's you'll know that the way to defeat that is by saying I am free I I like being around people I like being social so we attack that belief system to get over the claustrophobic feeling that we feel on a plane okay so we accept it then we forgive it that's rule two we forgive what that trigger is doing to us so we treat it like a so totally separate entity so here's me and here's my claustrophobia I forgive you so we can all say oh yes I forgive you but I want you to mean it call it out think about it rationally and logically and say to yourself is this really worth being scared about no is always the answer because with limited beliefs we have those fears because it's something that's happened to us personally does every plane that goes into the air is it crowded does every plane that goes in the air does it go at 35,000 feet above the earth does every plane that goes up crash and everyone dies no so you've got to attack it and say this is a limited belief because it's limited because it only happens to me so we take that fear away and we say you know what thank you now when we give thanks what we're creating here is that positive energy we forgive the fact that we're claustrophobic we forgive the fact that we've got a broken leg from our past we forgive that childhood trauma we forgive that person who sexually assaulted us we forgive them for doing only what they could do at that time in their life with no other way or option to deal with it because if we do have a blockage that's from somebody else it is so easy to say they did what they could only do knowing what they do it's not my responsibility to hang on to all that emotion that they inflicted so we take that responsibility and we start being accountable for our own actions instead of the actions of others so if you do have that fear of flying you say okay what can I do in this instance where when I travel by air I'm not going to have that trigger anymore that's how we accept it and we recognize it and then we respond to it which is what we do when we forgive we respond so we've called out the behavior that or the blockage that we've got in our life and we say you know what I am scared so get that emotion building within you but you know what that fear that I hold within that's only a limited belief so we get connected to it feel how you feel when you do fly because I'm going to stick with that example how do you feel and then we can forgive ourselves oh my god I went in a plane once we hit this really bad turbulence and we all nearly crash and burned so we forgive that example 
that experience in our life. We say, does that happen to every time somebody goes in a plane? No. So we've got to take away that fear by forgiving it for happening to us in the past. And we say it like a prayer. <clears throat> so when we do forgive, always give grace, always give thanks. And you look at that trigger of what's causing the blockage and you say, you know what? Thank you so much for the opportunity that you gave me. Opportunity? What opportunity? That wasn't an opportunity. I fell down and broke my leg when I was a kid. Now I can't run anymore. That's what you might be saying, yeah? Everything does happen for a reason. There are no coincidences. There are no ironies in life. Everything is synchronicities. Aligning us into who we have destined to become in this life through our life contract. And we sign that life contract before we're born where you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, and this is what I'm going to learn along the way. So it's our life contract. So when we forgive, always give thanks to what has happened in our past. We appreciate even the bad things that happen. You know, I do like talking about 6th of May last year, which is coming up in a few days. It's my anniversary of the night I died. And people say to me, how can you ever forgive that man who caused that to you? He killed you. I died. I say, extremely easy. Because I have accepted what he did. He only was doing what he could at that time. He didn't know anything else. With his limited belief system. And then I forgave him by saying thank you. I thanked him for giving me that opportunity where now I can speak to others like yourself and say, you know what? I know this life isn't all that exists. We have many lives. Home is so much different to this three-dimensional world that we've created here on earth. So what an opportunity even death gave me. So that's number two, we forgive. And lastly, we release. How do we release a trauma? How do we release that fear of flying? How do we release abuse from a partner or manipulation from a friend? How do we release that? We say thank you. And then we say, how we do not allow it anymore in our lives in the future. Because once we release a blockage, we don't want it back, right? We don't want it back. Once you're gone today, you're not coming back. You're gone. Okay? So, once we start accepting the issue, which is our blockage, then we forgive it. Get emotional. Cry your heart out and say, my God, that hurt me so badly. Because that's how we forgive. By saying you only did what you could do at that time. You had no other option. It's in the past. It cannot be changed. So I forgive you for the opportunity that has arisen since then. If I didn't break my leg, I would now not be able to do this. So we use it in a positive way and say, oh my God, if I didn't break my leg, I would never have gone into that field where I'm now successful. I would never have met that friend who I now have. So we think about all the good things that are coming into our lives. Don't think about what hasn't occurred because there's millions of possibilities every day of things that could occur in our lives. Geez, I wish I'd gone to the shop at 10 o'clock instead of 11. I might not have had that car crash. Um, you can't say that because you weren't driving at 10 o'clock. So you don't know if you did have another car accident. It may have been even worse where you can't talk about it afterwards. So never put yourself into that position where you say, oh my gosh, I wish I had done that. Because we can only do what we do with the information at hand at that specific time. Okay. So once we start releasing, it's like a prayer. 
and you say to yourself, you know what? Thank you so much for giving me this blockage of a fear of flying. I now accept that my fear is due to, you remember that because? I, I acknowledge that I do have a fear of flying because I may be claustrophobic. I don't like being so high. I don't have that control over the aircraft. But now I'm going to release that and allow my life to unfold without it. We step back from the situation. Sometimes we have to take that step back in life. How many times do people say, Linda, take a step back and look at it from someone else's perspective? So that's what we do. We step back out of ourselves and we say, Linda's got this fear of flying. She doesn't like being um, in a situation where she's claustrophobic. So I'm now going to release that fear of being around other people. I am now grateful for the opportunity for within her to identify that. And I'm going to allow her to now be anything she wants because that will not affect her anymore. So we throw out that claustrophobia. We throw out that injured leg. We throw out anything else, ailment, injury, illness, thought, behavior, belief system that we have. We throw it out to the universe and we say, thank you so much for allowing me to have that. Thank you for the lessons that I learned from that. But from today, I don't want it in me anymore. Take it away. I give it to you most graciously. Thank you for the opportunities that has arisen in my life since this blockage has occurred. Because now I'm standing in my strength. I'm now standing in my own true self. And I'm standing here with my self-responsibility. Because I know what I want in my future. And that is not one of them. And that is how we make the magic occur. That is totally how we get rid of blockages. If it's something that you think you may have acquired from a past life. And you think, oh my God, bad things always happen to me. It must be incarnated in this body from a previous life. Then you shut it down straight away. Has everything in your life always been bad? And if someone says, oh yes, it has. Then you say, okay, so you've got clothes on your back today. That's good. You've been able to afford clothes. Did you drove here today? Oh good, you've got a car. A lot of people don't have a car. See how we break down that belief system? Because that's a limited belief because they think everything always happens bad to them. And then you forgive it and you say, you know what, what lessons did I learn? What opportunities did I have where everything goes bad every single day? You think, well, if, I, if things didn't go bad for me today, I would never have found that church. I would never have found that soup kitchen. I would never have found that support group. I would never have been able to rant about that friend who let me sleep on a couch. So there are opportunities of growth. How did it feel when you were sleeping on your friend's house when you're homeless? That's an opportunity to grasp by the horns and ride that bull into our futures because it's growing. It's learning and most of all, it's interacting with ourselves and becoming aware of who we truly are. So accept the blockage, call it out for what it is and then forgive it. Get emotional, Be, make it heartfelt and say, you know what, thank you so much for being in my life. Thank you for the opportunity that you presented where I can now do this and lastly we release it to the universe under all the thanks appreciation and grace of God and then your life will miraculously get better stay tuned guys more things are coming bye To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. 
To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.